Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky, I'm mum to two little boys, Toby who's almost two, he'll probably be two by the time this video goes live, and Rupert who's four. I am a gardener, farmer, forager, an artist, and I am the host of the Nature and Nourish podcast. And in this video, I want to show you what's in our morning basket for May. Um, the morning basket is a beautiful concept that works really well if you are a homeschooler um, or if you just want to educate your children at home a bit, even on the weekends, and share some beautiful poems, literature, and ideas with your children. I love the morning basket as a way of setting the scene for the day. It's a great way of reminding myself to explore certain poems, um, learn certain subjects with my children, and it's just been an absolute joy doing this with my kids. If you're interested to see what's been in previous uh, morning baskets, I'll link them below. Um, I think I've been uploading these videos since February, so um, you can go check those out too. So in this month's basket, um, I have quite a few new bits in here actually, and I am super excited to share it all with you. I have downscaled ever so slightly for this month because now that we're in late spring, um, we have been trying to spend as much time as we can outside. So a lot of the reading and things like that we do, we tend to do outside anyway, and we spend a little less time inside. So I have downscaled because of that. So let's just crack into the basket and see what I've got. So the first thing I have in our basket is this lovely poetry story and song anthology for young children. It's called Spring, so obviously it's seasonal. It's by Winston Press and I love this series. It's always a real treat to have this um, in our library. Um, this month, month of May, I've been focusing on caterpillars and butterflies with my boys. So I've marked a section here which has some really sweet poems. Um, which have been really lovely. Um, this one right at the top has uh, really been a pleasure to read to the boys so far. There's also a little song in there, and yeah, I always enjoy this series hugely. I do actually have my summer anthology in here too, because there's quite a few stories, poems and songs in here about Whitsunday and uh, that falls at the end of May. So there's a Whitson Daisy story, and there's also um, a little song here as well, and I thought that'd be quite nice to cover it. Always include a recorder in our morning basket, um, mainly because there are always a couple of um, songs in here that work well if you've got a recorder, you can play them and sort of learn the little ditty yourself, or your children can sing along to the stories and you can play the recorder. Um, I really like Recorder, I find it really fun, it's so easy, and the kids can sort of play on it too, and I mean it's near impossible to break a plastic recorder, so um, yes, it's a really nice addition. I've had this one since I was a child, and it's the Alios 205A, and it's made in Japan, and it's a really good little recorder, it's got a little thumb rest on the back, and yeah, I love it, I love the little cord bag it comes in. And one day I will get myself um, maybe a new recorder. Because I have actually also, um, including this in my morning basket, started learning the recorder again. So this is the Basic Recorder Lessons by Ralph W.M. Zeppelin. And um, yeah, I just thought this would be quite interesting to sort of learn a little bit more about playing the recorder because it's been so long and I would actually quite like to graduate onto a flute at some point, so I thought learning the recorder would be a nice way of brushing up on my skills. Okay, so I've also got our lovely Usborne My First Outdoor book. I've had this in our basket now for quite a while. It's a beautiful um, hardback book with lovely chunky pages, and it sort of loosely covers a lot of different subjects, so it's quite handy for young toddlers and children. Um, I've just got this Bugs page marked, it has a little bit of information about a broad range of insects, um, so it's a lovely one for children who just need to have like subjects introduced really, um, not much, not great detail. Um, and I love the way this has got chunky pages as well. There was also, there's also a section on the beach in here, which I like, beach combing, so it has a few objects that you might find on the beach, and um, some of the things you might do as children on the beach. 
and those pages are always really interesting to my children so I love that book. It's Toby's birthday in May. I have popped Pippa and Pelle and the Birthday Gifts by Daniela Treasure into our basket. So this is a book that we're reading every day to help Toby prepare for his birthday. As he's only going to be two, he's still quite new to the concept of birthdays. So I thought this would be a lovely introduction as we already are such fans of this series and um, this little gnome couple who are very, very sweet. I love this picture of them in their bunk bed. So um, that's in our basket just because it's Toby's birthday. I also have um, this book, which is 199 Things in the Garden, again by Usborne. This is another sort of thick cardboard page book. And it's a great guide for spotting things when you're out and about. And for example, creepy crawlies, the log pile. Um, we've got garden birds and then flowers. And I thought this would be really fun for the boys so they can go and find daisies, dandelions, um, all sorts of things in the garden. And they can use this book as a guide when we're outside. Um, as well as indoors on rainier days. As usual, I've got my pen control book. This is the Collins White Clean Book. And I think these are great. I always have a whiteboard marker in my basket and I try and get both the boys to scribble on this as much as they can because it helps develop um, the motor control and the muscles in the hands and get them prepared for writing. And I also love our Jolly Phonics activity books. This is still number one. I like to just repeat um, this particular book as it covers the S-A-T-I-P-N letters um, and just gives them a sort of understanding of phonics. I also like the song that goes along with Jolly Phonics. And we often sing that when we're outside. Um, okay, so moving on to um, a gorgeous poetry book. A first book of nature by Nicola Davis. I have shown this in every video so far, but for this month we're concentrating on just these pages, which is the butterfly and the caterpillar. Really, really beautiful. And of course, if the boys want to read anything else from this book, that's absolutely fine. But I always try and mark a couple of pages that I feel are relevant to the subjects that we're covering. And really that just gives me a jump off point. It doesn't have to be that we only read that certain bit of the book and often you know for example we might pick up this one and we're reading about the um, bugs and the insects and then Rupert might switch to another page and then we discuss a completely different topic it really doesn't matter but it is nice to have a little bit of structure and um, when you start off with the month just as a parent it gives you somewhere to begin and I find that really useful um okay so next up I will show you Okay, I've got a couple of butterfly books. Um, this one is A Butterfly is Patient by Diana Hutz Ashton and Sylvia Long. And it is so lovely. The illustrations in this are incredible. There's a whole page of caterpillars. And then there's a very short storyline to this, which is scientific based. So lots of facts on the life cycle of a butterfly, different types. Um, why they have certain colours um, and things like that on their wings and I just love the illustrations in this they are really accurate which is nice um, so it does actually show you exactly what a butterfly looks like which is quite handy um, it's not too stylized, but it's also very pretty and aesthetic and this is an American book so just bear that in mind there might be quite a few um, types of butterflies in here that you're not used to seeing if you live in the UK or Ireland but um, that doesn't bother me at all and actually it's been a real pleasure to look at some different types of butterflies and yeah that is the butterfly is patient and I actually have purchased a felt butterfly and a felt caterpillar to go along with this but they just haven't arrived yet and they look really really sweet and I'm going to be using those as part of our storytelling especially with our Winston Press um, stories with butterflies and I thought that would be really fun so I'm sorry that I don't have that to show you but I bought them off the Inquisitorium so I'll link that below um, and they're also you can find felt butterflies and caterpillars I think on Myriad Toys where I usually buy a lot of our stuff um, but yes moving on uh, My Butterfly Bouquet by Nicola Davis illustrated by Hannah Peck 
this is another new book. I think this came out this year. And it is the story of this little girl who comes out of hospital and she's feeling really sick and tired and it's winter and her dad brings her to this butterfly house and together they discover all these amazing butterflies and um, they decide to go home and prepare their garden for spring. So they do lots of gardening together and eventually spring arrives and all the butterflies with it and at the back there's some information on the environment and why butterflies and flowers need each other, what we can do to help and then also a lovely little life cycle at the back. Um, I really really like this book, it's beautiful, it's great to see in more, in more and more children's books there's so much more diversity going on in the illustrations and that is so brilliant to see so I love this. Um, I'd also love to see more children's illustrators illustrating children with disabilities as well you really don't see that very often at all and i mean it's so important that we show show a really diverse range of children skin colors um cultures and also abilities i mean super super important so um if you've got any suggestions for me do leave them below because i would love to uh, buy some more books that show a whole range of different types of children Okay, so moving on, um, I love this range of sticker books by the National Trust and Noisy Crow. Nosy Crow. Um, this is the Beatles, Butterflies and British Mini Beasts. This range is so lovely. It actually reads quite well just as like an illustrated book. Um, they don't even, you don't really even need the stickers on it. It's so pretty. As you can see there, there's loads of pages and the stickers look like this lovely big and colourful stickers very very pretty and then all the pages for the stickers are great um, there's a little bit of information through each page about the topic and um, we obviously are going to be doing the caterpillar and butterfly page at some point this month and we might even do the mini beasts at night and cover a little bit about moths too and then at the back there's a checklist um, of all the different insects in the book. Um, these books tend to be about three or four pounds um, on Amazon, which is insane. It's such good value. Highly recommend the entire series. Um, so far we've tried quite a few of them and they've all been amazing. So I'm really excited for the boys to have a go at that. I always like to have quite a few poetry books in our morning basket. Poems are just so great because they're quick. Um, you can keep a younger child's attention, I find, with a poem, and um, it's just great fun. It's a great way of exploring language and rich language with your child. We decided to try a new poetry book this month, and we went for A Child's Garden of Verse, or Verses, sorry, by Robert Louis Stevenson, illustrated by Tasha Tudor. I got this off um, eBay because I think it's out of print now, and I really like the idea of this one because of the Tasha, tu Tasha Tudor illustrations. She is a gardener, primarily, um, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't think she's alive anymore, and um, she's quite well known in America, but not so much over here, but her illustrations are very pretty, very Victorian almost, very charming. Children's Garden of Verse is such a classic collection of poems. I love this one, with the bed is a boat, there's a nighttime one. And I thought it would be just really nice to add this to our collection. And the illustrations, like I said, are really pretty and charming and Rupert's had so much fun just looking through this. There's some seasonal poetry, like this one, Winter Time. Um, and let me show you a few more. Really lovely. Um, obviously, this was written a really long time ago, so bear that in mind when you're reading it. Some of them obviously refer to his nanny a lot at the time, and I find that quite sad in a way because he actually wrote this book for his nanny, um, as in his not like his grandmother, his nanny, as in his actual nanny, um, who looked after him instead of his mother or his grandmother. And he, um, yeah, he refers to her a lot in it, and it's a real ode to her, which is quite sweet. So this would be quite nice teamed with. Uh, Secret Garden either as a movie or a book as a read aloud so I really like this and I think it'll be a book that we dip in and out of throughout their uh, childhood. So going back to butterflies 
Um, I have some really fun costumes actually that I got off Amazon. They are not the most beautiful quality or anything, but they definitely were perfect for my rough and tumble boys. There are these wings that come with little shoulder straps and handles at the end. And there's two different colors. There's a pink one as well. And they also come with these little cute masks. <laughs> so they can look like butterflies. And we've played with these so much already. The boys get so excited when I say, let's go dress up as butterflies. <laughs> and then they've been learning all about the wings and they can flap around the house or outside. And actually, I really want to build up our dressing um, stuff. We don't really have any costumes or anything like that. So I thought these would be great. I could just keep them um, in a basket in our play space and then they can dress up whenever they want. But at the moment, I've kept them in the basket just so I remember to pull them out and keep the butterfly, um, I suppose, magic alive um, for the boys. Okay, so moving on. I've got a little fairy tale here. The Enormous Turnip, uh, this is the Ladybird edition, it's out of print, but um, you can get them so cheap on, on the internet. Um, I bought this one, I think, of, I think I did get this off Amazon, but from a secondhand seller. And I chose this one because I actually like the illustrations in this one best. I felt they would be most appropriate for Rupert. I thought he'd really enjoy them. And he loves this story so much. He thinks it's hilarious. And I am really excited to introduce more and more fairy tales with Rupert as he gets older. He's definitely at the age now where the slightly longer stories of something like this are so appropriate for him. He understands the whole concept and I mean these are the kind of books that you can also then keep and give to your children as early readers. So um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be working a lot more with fairy tales over the coming months. And yeah, The Enormous Turnip I think is a good choice for spring and summer because we are actually growing turnips on the farm. Hopefully none will get this big, but we certainly do have a few that grow pretty massive. Okay, so I do have um, a maths book in this basket because I thought it would be quite fun to introduce some basic maths via this lovely Lift the Flat book by Osborne. This is Lift the Flat First Maths. And it really concentrates on mainly counting. So um, there's plenty of pages in this which you can discover with your child. So this one is counting the different animals. So for example, the giraffe, there's one. And then you go find the giraffe. So you can kind of match, count as you go. There's one about being in the classroom. And then you can count the little dots on the school bags. Um, a birthday party. And this is quite fun because it's about getting the presents in size of order, from smallest to biggest. Um, and then this one is at the picnic. And yeah, this is again about more and less, which is another great mathematical concept, kids. Um, this is basic addition and subtraction. Um, and again, uh, addition and subtraction. And then basic problem solving as well. So a great book actually for um, a variety of ages, I think, depending on your children's skill set and really engaging and fun because of the flaps um, and bright colours and everything. So I love this. Um, I don't know what age this is for. Probably, I imagine, like three to six, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> my children and I, all I can base it on is my children. Uh, Toby is obviously way too young for this. I mean, he's not particularly showing that he's mathematically inclined anyway. But I thought Rupert would appreciate it. And so far, he loves it. So, um really good fun and we've only really just looked at the basic counting pages that's really where Rupert's at right now but um, definitely one that I'm going to keep in really nice condition and store for when they're a bit older as well. We have a Shirley Hughes uh, colours book from the nursery collection. This is a lovely way of learning about different colours such as yellow, red, blue. Um, it's so beautiful. I love Shirley Hughes illustrations. They're just so magical and nostalgic. And yeah, I think this is a great um, way of learning about colours. I also have A Child's Seasonal Treasury by uh, Betty Jones. I've marked off the section we're using for spring. Again, this is a, reminds me a little bit of the Winstone Press books. It has um, poems about things like lambs, seeds, daisies, I think um, bunnies, a May song, hens, ducks, 
fairies, and then there's finger plays as well in this, um, rabbits, garden seeds, that's the kind of theme. There's also um, some games if you've got more than one child, and then there are art, some art ideas as well, which are really fun. Um, so I love this. I always dip in and out of this throughout the year. There's some recipes as well, gluten-free coconut cookies, lemon poppy seed cookies, hot cross buns, Easter bunny fruit salad, and cupcakes. Um, a really great book, um, highly recommend it. We've had this for quite a while now, as you can see, it's well loved. And yeah, it's a really handy book because it's got all the things that you kind of need in it. Um, and a great one for the early years. As usual, we have our Waldorf alphabet book. That's sort of part of our phonics study. And I also have the whole family rhythms guide here. This is the spring one. And I've marked it on the um, caterpillar section. This is actually for April, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna study this in May. And um, there's a little caterpillar finger game. Um, a little story, which is really sweet. And then there's a recipe for caterpillar jellies. Um, and then there's some paper butterflies as well. Very, very simple, but quite a nice one to do with really young kids. Set crafts, I do actually have a craft book in the basket. This book I got free when I purchased the Pippa and Pele birthday book um, from Florist Books. They send you a book when you order one if you're subscribed to them, which is so generous. <laughs> and they gave me the spring and summer activities, come rain or shine. So it's a seasonal craft book and it's really, really sweet. I'll show you some of the um, things that they have in it. Um, they have gardening in a box, vegetable painting, so painting with vegetable dyes that is, um, making radish caterpillars, making nests, um, games with daisies and dandelions, making uh, strawberries, growing from cuttings, um, a quite fun one of an embroidered tablecloth, that's quite sweet. Cardboard box house on rainy days. Um, doing spring posies for the house. Felt vegetables, I thought that was quite fun. Um, loads of games for mud. Um, discovering moss. And yeah, and then there's the summer section as well, which has things like bug hotels and things in it. So a really nice um, book for getting inspiration as a mum. This would work well for any age really, um, particularly sort of young children. So I've put that in my basket in case I'm in need of a sort of activity. I can dip into that. So I'm almost done. I've just got a pack of things here that I can show you. Okay, so first up is the um, At The Cherry Tree cards. I've got my seasonal card. Uh, this is the May one. This comes in a whole pack from obviously January to December and each month has a little illustration with a few things that you might see in nature and then on the back there's some facts about the month. So for example, badger cubs are starting to emerge from dens in the evening with their parents. Um, hedgerows are a fantastic place to visit at any time with hawthorn and blossom, there's many things to see, so that kind of thing. And there's like a butterfly, a pigeon, or maybe that's a cuckoo, it's a cuckoo, <laughs> and a magpie. Um, so I love those, they're really fun to kind of explore them with the children and also they're great because they are uh, matte laminated so um, they don't get too damaged. I've got my colour paddles, I love these, um, I love the fact that the blue and the yellow make green so it's quite appropriate for spring and the boys just go mad for these and I do as well, I love putting the, them <laughs> over my eyes and you can mix them up then and see the colour change so it's a great way of learning that colour theory. You can buy a pack of these off of Amazon and they come with a whole range of colours so you can do quite good colour um, mixing with just the paddles. Um, I've also got the At The Cherry Tree Garden Wildflower Pocket Set. Um, these are so cute, these are gloss laminated and they have loads of different flowers that you might find in your garden like periwinkle, daisies, buttercups and dandelions. There's a little bit of information about them as well. Um, and the Latin name too, um, Herb Robert, uh, Ribbot Plantain or Plantago Lanceolata um, and then a little bit of information at the bottom, really really cute and a perfect one for this time of year when we're, like I said, we're out in the garden all the time, I can bring those cards out with us and we can do a little bit of um, sort of nature spotting, finding all the various things. 
uh, like a little scavenger hunt. I have a couple of these poem cards. This is It's Raining, It's Pouring. And this one is called Dig a Little Hole. Dig a little hole, plant a little seed, pour a little water, pull a little weed, chase a little bug. Hey ho, there it goes. Give a little sunshine, grow a little rose. Um, and these are part of the spring pack by oh little acorn learning i believe i'll link it below she has this incredible pack that has like little um theaters and stories and recipes and loads of nature activities it's really fantastic but i just picked a couple of um songs that i liked um and then i have some printouts i'm going to be laminating this fiddlesticks education uh, flashcard set at the moment i've just got the printout and this is the Garden Wildlife series. So it's got different types of birds, butterflies, bumblebees, ladybird, grasshopper, cat, squirrel, slow worm, um, and so on. So I'm gonna get my uh, father-in-law to laminate those for me, but they're so great. We had the pond, one of these, and they went down so well with the boys that um, I decided I would have to get the garden set as well. Okay. And then we also have these butterfly printouts. You can get these for free on the Inquisitorium. I'll link that below. And I just printed out a couple of copies of these. I think actually there's two different types of butterfly. Yeah, to color in. And um, I just thought that'd be a fun rainy day activity for us to keep in with our butterfly and caterpillar study. Um, and then I printed out the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum. I'm so glad I finally did this. I've had this for quite a while and I do use this to inspire me every month um, for topics. So for example, the caterpillar and butterfly theme was from the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum. And you can really dive into this as much as you want. Um, at the moment, because my boys are quite young and I've, I guess I've got kind of like an unschooling approach, um, I find the, what I like to do is I like to flick to the page that we're on. So I'll just open it up in May. And just give me a second. Okay. So what they have is like May, week one, caterpillars. And she gives you, Lynn gives you a little bit of information about the caterpillars. Then there's a nature walk activity. And again, there's more facts about the caterpillars than that. Um, and then there's links, pages to the Handbook of Nature Study, which you can purchase on Amazon. I haven't got that myself. I think that would go over the top of my children's heads right now, but definitely if you've got older children, you could turn that into a real science study. She has a really fantastic book list that has really good suggestions. And then there's a poem to enjoy. So she's given The Caterpillar by Robert Graves and it's a lovely poem. And there's a piece of artwork that she, she suggests. And then there's extension activities as well. So for example, she says, read Alice and, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and make a model of one of your caterpillars with Play-Doh or clay. Um, create a bar graph in your nature journal to show the growth of the caterpillars. Um, as one of the activities was to actually capture a uh, caterpillar and see it grow. And then week two is caterpillars, and then um, week three is ants, and I think week four is butterflies. So I kind of mesh this all together and I've just done caterpillars and butterflies, but I do love this curriculum. It's so fantastic and um, it's just, it's a lovely one. I highly recommend it. And even if you don't homeschool your children, I think you would still get so much use out of this. It's something that you could do with your children over summer or at the weekends, and it is lovely. Um, and I think the last thing I have to show you is this printout, which is a Magical Tea Time ebook by Josie Hammer. Um, I'm trying to remember what her Instagram is. Um, I'm gonna have to, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. I'm gonna link it below because it's amazing. But she does these beautiful tea time layouts. And I got this ebook as part of one of those seasonal bundles that sometimes I promote on my stories. And this one is so lovely. That's the springtime suggestion. She's got a lovely bee cake and she gives um, some ideas for laying out a magical spring tea time. Here's the summer one. Oh. That's the summer one. And I'll link the, um, like I said, I'll link the Instagram handle below because 
all those photographs you can find on her Instagram anyway. Um, but I really wanted to sort of, I guess, do a better, I really wanted to inspire myself to do better poetry tea times for the boys and um, Lynn Hammer's guide is just lovely. So I think that's it. That's everything I've got for May's basket. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you didn't mind that I'm too snuffly. I've been really sick for last week. So I'm so behind on everything and I'm still feeling a bit rubbish. Yeah, this is everything that we'll be doing for the next few weeks. And um, yeah, it's gonna be so much fun. I've, like I said, I've already been doing lots of butterfly fly theme things and dressing up and the boys are absolutely loving it. It's such a joy. And yeah, I'm just really enjoying all the resources for May. It feels so joyful and light this month. There's nothing too overwhelming and I feel like I said I cut it back a bit and it feels very manageable and I think we're going to have so much fun. Um, but yes, I'm going to wrap up the video now. I'm going to leave all the links to everything I've mentioned below. If you want to purchase any of the books, please, please do follow my affiliate link for Amazon. Um, it's, su it's such a help and it's a great way of supporting the channel. And alternatively, don't forget to check out Patreon. I have a Patreon community over on patreon.com forward slash Becky O'Cole. Every month we have a live Zoom chat where we discuss all things slow living, seasonal living, nature journaling, all those good things. And there's also a monthly vlog and you can of course ask me any question anytime you want. Um, so go check that out and support the channel there if you can. I mean, it means the world to me and it makes such a difference. So thank you so much. I hope you have a beautiful May. Leave a comment below saying hi. And if you have any video suggestions, do let me know. And I will be back soon in another video. Bye.